today is our first build of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro Generation 2 that just came out. Uh, we're going to throw, th throw this together. Uh, it's primarily built for uh, our shoots for uh, documentaries and some pro, semi-pro filmmaking. So first we have the Blackmagic Cinema Pocket, Pocket Cinema 6K G2. Uh, this just recently came out. It comes with uh, a DaVinci Resolve Studio and it is the generation two of the 6K Pro. Uh, 6K Pro has the tilting LCD and a uh, built-in ND filter. This still has the tilting LCD, but they took out the ND filter uh, and upgraded the internals so the battery life lasts longer. In here you see we have the camera strap, shoulder strap. Uh, you're probably not going to use this at all ever. Uh, a Black Magic Cinema Design sticker. Uh, this is your welcome package and your Da Vinci Studio package. Uh, also in here you have your battery, which is the smaller battery. It'll last maybe an hour at filming at the highest frame rate. Uh, wall wire for the camera. Uh, so you can plug this straight, plug the camera straight into the wire, into the wall. Uh, then it comes with multiple adapters for anywhere you decide to go. There's the US one right here. Now we're going to go in and we're going to see our camera. So first coming out is the battery charger for the small battery. And it is a USB wire to charge it it doesn't come with a plug for the usb though so you need an adapter and then out comes the camera now this is the same size as the 6k pro uh here you can see lcd comes out folds completely flat for those low shots and it is all touch screen um there's the on off switch here, multiple programmable functions, shoot, ISO. So it's pretty much all the same of the 6K Pro, uh, just the price point of the 6K. Yep. Battery pops in right there. And then your stand can go there. Next thing we're opening is the uh, hand kit, handheld kit for the 6K Pro. So they don't have a 6K Pro G2 cage out, but since the 6K Pro G2 is the same size as the 6K Pro, it'll fit the 6K Pro cages. So opening this, you'll see it has the side hand rail and the top hand rail, uh, the plug adapters. And at the bottom, it has the, uh, the Samsung T5 hard drive sleeve on the bottom of the rig. It also has the, uh, the rod adapter tip. So we're opening this up. First thing that I'm going to pull out is the full camera cage itself, which is actually really nice. It has like the, the wood grain small rig emblem on the top. Uh, and if you look at it, it's pretty a pretty standard small rig uh, cage. At the bottom has the two Allen wrenches, comes with an Allen wrench attached to it that magnetizes to it, so you never lose it. Next is the side handrail. 
uh, this will attach to the side just using the, the slide grip. Here's the cable wrangler. So any of the, so the USB hard drive cable will slide through here and you clamp it. When I build it, you'll see it. Uh, this is also the cable adapter holder for the uh, solid state drive that goes on the bottom of the cage, which is right here. You slide your drive right in here, and this gets attached back here and holds the cable still, so it doesn't fall out while you're moving. This is for your rods, for your follow focus, uh, your battery. This We'll be using this when we attach our V-mount battery. Uh, this attaches to the bottom of the uh, cage. Another thing on this cage I forgot, it has two spots for the DJI gimbal. If you look, it tells you where to use for the DJI RS2 or RSC2. So when if you get the gimbal, this will attach right to it. You just can't use this guy. Okay. I think that's everything on that side. Next is the top handrail. It's a rubber grip. It has the red small rig on the on the side, and also has a shoe on the top to attach in another attachment. And this is all the hardware and a couple more Allen wrenches, bolts and everything that you would need. And what we're gonna do is now that we have the small rig out and the camera out, we're gonna put the cage on this. Uh, and as we go, we're gonna attach everything to the cage. So first you're going to take your smaller camera, a uh, smaller camera cage, and take your camera. And it just slides right in. My finger's in the way. Uh, slides right in. You take your Allen wrench on the bottom, flip it upside down, keep your thumb on the back. And this just tightens right into those two screws. It's a perfect fit for this. Now we're just tight enough that now this is attached to it. Okay, I'm keeping the Allen wrench out for now. Uh, next, I'm going to take out my hardware. hardware. So next I'm putting the top rail on. So this hangs off a little bit on the edges because of the tapering of the top of the camera, but that's okay. I'm going to take these two bolts, the two longer ones, and put it we're going to hand tighten it at first. This way we can adjust the handrail. Kind of center it. is too small. You use the bigger Allen wrench for these ones. Nope. There we go. And then we're just tight enough. Look at that. The next, I'm going to attach the uh, cable wrangler for the side. Uh, so I'm going to turn this to the side. For a minute. So with this, 
you have to open these before you hook this on because it becomes difficult with everything attached. That's one thing I have to say that's the hardest part of this is having these little flaps be in the way as you're trying to attach the cables. So these just get hand tightened. Leave the clamps open for now because we're not hooking any cables in there yet. And that just slides right in there, just like that. Okay, and see these flaps kind of, there's nowhere for them to go right now. And it's hard for you to get in there to pop them off if this is already on. Next is the handrail, which goes on this same side. So if you're attaching this, always attach this first. So you could get into the into here to open this and then this handrail just kind of slides right into here so wherever you want it to go and then you tighten the clamp on the side here so now this side is all set now you have the side rail hand grip Okay, next, uh, before we add any more to this cage, uh, I'm going to open the T5 solid state drive uh, that gets attached to this. So we open up the top. So it's a nice small drive. Uh, the solid states. A lot better than regular hard drives because if you bump them they're not going to skip they're not going to break the disc as much and with the t5 uh it holds the bit rates better than the t7s uh t7 when you're buying uh solid state drives samsung t7s have a higher bit rate but once you're recording, it tends to drop those bit rates. And from what I've read, it's something internally that they've used uh, weaker internals. But the T5 is still the best bet to use on your Black Magic. Uh, it can only go up to T5 one terabyte. You cannot use the T5 two terabytes. Some people can, but uh, it's suggested just one terabyte or below. Uh, there is another brand out there uh, that is specifically for Blackmagic Cinema Pockets, uh, but I don't have that information with me right now. Uh, so you take this guy, the Samsung T5, and at the bottom of your cage, you're going to slide it right in there, right there, and then we're going to flip this guy upside down and hold on tight. So there's a little, little Allen right there, and you're going to tighten that, and that's going to put the pressure on your hard drive to keep it in place. Okay, so you want to do this before you add anything else to the bottom of this, so you can get in and out of here. Uh, so I may have this out a little too far, so let's see what this looks like. Yep. It's a little far out, so let's adjust. There we go. So you want this just about flush to here. If you look from the side, this is as far as it'll go. So let's tighten it again. It's not going to go anywhere. Now this gets, so this slides on and off right now, but it'll get tight once you start turning this. It's not going to slide off, uh, and that's where your cable goes, so it doesn't pop out as you're 
moving your camera around. All right, so now that we have our hard drive on the bottom, we're gonna add our rails, our rail holder, actually not our rails yet. Uh, so this is, this goes on the bottom of our camera. Uh, it'll attach to right here, this bolt right there. Uh, so in the hardware, you're gonna pull out this Allen screw and you're gonna go through the back here that back one, and it has to get screwed in through here first. So now it's a slide like that, but it's not going to pull out because it's threaded through. And we take this, flip this upside down again, hold on tight. And screw this first. And we're going to take our Allen wrench and just make sure it's tight enough. There we go. And that's for that bottom handrail, bottom rails. We have our bottom rod holder on our camera. We're going to open our small rig rods. Uh, this is a uh, six pack rod kit. Uh, so let's open this up. In here, it's a six piece kit. And when we open this up, We have two long A10 rods. And two short rods. Both A10 size. And then the last two pieces of the kit are the extension adapters. pretty much two threads. So we take one end of our small ones, screw it in, take a long one, and screw them in there. So now we have one nice long rod. We do the same for the other. Well, it doesn't really matter because you can, both ends of these have threads so you can actually attach more uh, items to them. Uh, now we take these and we make sure this bottom is open. And we're going to slide it right through. Nice and easy and then tight. even and we tighten it up now these these wing nuts actually you can pull them out and adjust them so they're even uh, flat so they're not just sticking down and then you can't put your camera down so nice little spring action in there now it can sit flat 
Now that we have our rods on here, we're going to attach our V-mount plate, uh, also from Small Rig. Can we open this up? So the V-mount plate is for the V-mount battery, uh, which is a larger battery. Uh, we have the 99 watt hour version. Uh, it clips right onto this and attaches right into the camera. Uh, this is the V-mount plate. It has quick release here, uh, battery slides right in here, and this is the uh, adapter where we're going to attach to the bottom of this and then slide it right onto our rods. Uh, so first we're going to hardware, this also comes with hardware, uh, small bolts, big bolts, and three Allen wrenches. So what we can do is we can take everything out. And we're going to attach it right there like that. So we need great thing about the small rig uh, small rig attachments is they can actually attach anywhere on this cage uh, so if I wanted to use a gimbal on this camera and still use my V mount uh, what I could do is take this plate off this clamp and attach it right here slide it out attach it here have my v-mount on here and all you would have to do is balance your gimbal for that added weight uh, so now we're going to take this and this slides right onto the back just like that and then we tighten these and tight so uh, the benefit of having this is you have longer battery life uh, it kind of balances this out uh, so the weight from the battery will be back here weight from the camera will be on the front so it's kind of holding like a piece of luggage it's, it's a little longer but you have a counterbalance of carrying this now uh, so here's our V mount battery uh, it's Mayday uh, it's the 99 watt hour, uh, so it's going to maybe last about two to four hours, uh, depending on uh, what options you're running on here. It has the D-tap, which is going to run right into the camera, and it also has a USB adapter, so anything you want to attach, like a screen or anything, you run that through here or even charge your phone. Uh, so we're gonna attach this right here. It slides right in and locks in, see? Uh, so with that, we have the D-tap wire. That guy right here. So we're gonna run it from here. snaps right in we're going to run the wire right over here so unfortunately it runs across you're not really going to be able to see it too well but it's right underneath this clamp Take that 
we line up the, the dots. So I'm gonna unscrew this so I can get to it. So the adapter is right here and here. So you take this and it plugs right in. Very difficult to do from this angle. And it snaps right in and it's plugged in. this again so this doesn't hold that cable this will hold other cables but everything gets kind of jammed up over here because this is where everything goes While we're here, I'm going to also attach my T5 cable. But when you're using the T5 or any SD uh, micro USB hard drive, you're going to want to use the cable that comes with the hard drive. Any aftermarket cable will throw off the bit rates. Uh, and then the camera will be temperamental and it may not read it, it may not record what you're recording, or it could corrupt what you're recording. So we loosen this guy and attach it back here, just like that. And then we tighten that back up. So this cable won't go anywhere as you're recording. And we take this one, and again, we're gonna go right in here, right through this spot. slides right in and we put a little bit of pressure on here and we tighten it up now that cable isn't going to go anywhere and we're all set next we're going to attach the mini mic uh, I just used a mini mic. This also has a uh, internal mics. Uh, we're going to use the regular mic attachment, uh, 35, 3.5 millimeter. So this slides right into the shoe up here, and then we tighten it. So it's right in there, and then this guy with these rubber spots. Slide it right into the microphone section. And that's where that goes. This also has two mini uh, mini audio ins, mini XLRs. Uh, so what we do is we have this adapter uh, you would attach this here, and this would slide in to this audio in, one of these two. Uh, then this, there's an adapter that you get that attaches to the back of it, 
and connects one of the normal adapters and it will connect and you'll actually be recording in DSLR or um, XLR. Now we're going to attach our lens. What we have here is a Rikonon uh, 50 millimeter high speed full frame cinnamon lens. Uh, it is a Canon ready uh, EF mount lens. Four out. So this is 50 millimeters. You control the T stops and the focus. Uh, the T stops. I don't know if you can really see it. You open and close the eye of your camera lens, uh, bringing in more white, less light as you would need. So you don't really have to mess with your ISOs on your camera. Uh, so let's put this back on here. Okay. So what we do now is we press this button and turn this off and that pops right out. We take the lens and we line up the red dot with the red dot. And turn until you hear that snap. Now your lens is attached and you're ready to shoot. Our last, uh, last item is our polarizing filter. Uh, a lot of these items I bought direct from uh, Small Rig and B&H. So if you're on a budget and you're trying to find something uh, useful like this, the 50 millimeter lens, usually it's like $600. Uh, B&H has a great used section uh, and they rate all their used items for poor condition up to like new brand new uh, rarely used uh, so you could go through there you could look at their ratings and everything and these items like this was pretty much 50 percent off uh, like 250 dollars for that lens that's normally a 500 600 dollar lens um, so it's a, it's a great option if you're just starting out uh, and you want to spend the money on something that's uh, high quality because this is, this is a cinema lens and not a, uh, not a uh, photography lens. A lot of people use the photography lenses over the cinema lenses and you're not going to have the control you have uh, and the crispness that you could get with a cinema lens. Uh, so this is the uh, polarizing filter, and we have just put it over the top and screw it into the front. This kind of helps with reflections and uh, the color of your uh, of the uh, things you're filming. 